Welcome to another episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And recently, once again, we were able to sit down with Superstition Mountain expert Ron Feldman. Now, this guy owns the OK Corral here in Apache Junction, takes people up there. He's traversed just about every trail there is up there and then some. So he's a wealth of knowledge. If you want to go to anybody who knows about the Superstition Mountains, he's the guy to go to. And I asked him the question about the mines themselves. Were the Peralta mines the same ones that Jacob Waltz found up there? Here's what he had to say. Does the stories about the Peraltas really play into this and the mines supposedly that they had back there? Well, the Spanish, you understand, were probably the greatest prospectors and miners the world's ever seen, including probably today. But um, they were here. Peraltas, the Spanish, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yes, I do believe that there was a Spanish party here. They did prospect heavily. Uh, their name might have been Peralta. Peralta is like Smith, mm -hmm. you know, so it's pretty prevalent. Um, but, you know, the Spanish weren't stupid. They didn't go into the West Side and prospect for gold because there isn't any. And you can't find any evidence that there would be. The, like I said, the quartz is wrong. It's hydrothermal quartz predominantly doesn't have any mineral in it. Mesothermal and epithermal are the two quartzes that run gold. The Goldfield Mountains here, where we're sitting, is epithermal, and this is a rich ground out here. The Spanish were here. They, they prospected and mined a little bit here. They weren't stupid, and they went to the east side. And they did locate mines there, and I do believe they were massacred by the Apaches. Not here on the face of the mountain, but over on the east side. And then, um, of course, they left the mines because they were massacred, and I believe that the Dutchmen got into one of those. So what you're telling me is that they weren't actually by Weaver's Needle in that area. They were actually on the east side. And they oh, they might have come out this way. Did they way, backtrack? But, so, I, some of them may have backtracked this way. Well, it's possible because they did. There were some that were here prospecting here. We, there was an old Spanish uh, tunnel found on this property, the way it was timbered and logged and so forth. So, yeah, they did prospect here, not heavily, but they did some mining over there. You know, when you consider on the east side, a spitting distance from where I'm talking about in the uh, early 1900s, middle 1900s, there was actually a mill there out of Rogers Canyon. Are you familiar with Rogers Mill? I'm not familiar with the mill. No. I've been to the location. I found the remnants of it. Uh, I have a piece of, of rock that came from the mill that's all melted from the mill that I picked up out there. Now, is it on the way up to Rogers Trough in that area? It's, it's in, well, no, it's actually beyond Rogers. It, you go oh, into the beyond. wilderness, okay. and it's, on, it's off of Roger Canyon, okay. right up alongside Iron Mountain. Okay. The mill was there. Well, what do they, what do they need a mill for in those times? They were mining big time back there. I, I, if you go into the records, you'll find all kinds of mines back there. Yeah, but were they after gold or were they after silver? Predominantly, they were silver. But with every gold, silver mine, there's always gold. And I do believe that the one mine that the Dutchmen worked was a predominantly a silver mine. That's what the Spanish were working, silver. But they found, or he did, a lens of gold and what they did is they stoked up into the ceiling and took the gold out. They dropped it. I can show you a mine out there. Well, I can't anymore, and I won't. <laughs> but I can show you a mine out there where this huge, you crawl on your belly, and you get to this room, and the room's as big as, at least as big as the inside of my building. And they stoked up. It was stoked out. So okay. consequently, that's the mine that I believe is the Dutchman. It's called the Silver Chief. The Silver Chief was a name that came later. And it was mined in the early 1900s, and but that is the location of the Dutchman mine. That was in the superstitions. It's in the wilderness. I, I did come across a mine like what you're talking about, but you didn't have to crawl in. You go in. They had the pilings, <laughs> and it opened up into a big stoop. That's, that's over it. by Raymer. No, no, no. Well, okay, yeah, no, and that's a totally different thing. You, you know the one I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's not it. Had to walk across a, a, a railroad tie or something yeah, to get to it. No, that's not it. Okay, all right. Um, Gee, Ron, I, I don't know what to say when you say that's the mine. Yeah. So then why hasn't that mine been verified? Well, that's a good question also. Um, my son and I and Jack Sanfelice and a lot of some other authors have written about it 
and somewhat verified it. As far as getting to the nitty gritty and being able to prove it, there's only one way you're gonna prove it. There's only one way you would ever find the Dutchman mine. Geologically, you have to prospect your way to it. So again, you have to have the right uh, elements for gold to even form. And you can prospect to a mine, you can, you, you know, I haven't gone to the point of saying, even in my books, uh, although I do say this is the mine, this was the mine, and this is where it is, I haven't gone to the point of saying, okay, now here's the proof. Um, I'm not comfortable doing that right now. I can do that, and I probably will someday. Um, I may write about it someday. I might do a TV thing. I don't know. Um, I told you about a treatment that I did. Yeah. And that whole treatment was exactly what we're talking about, the proof. Now, the other thing to prove this, okay, is you're going to have to take people out to the mine, okay? And now you're dealing with the Forest Service again, and that's going to be difficult. And that's one another reason. I can't just sit here and tell you the proof. Uh, you know, I need to take you out and show whoever the proof. But and then we can put it on paper. If, if we were, say, to want to go out there, you could show us how to get there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. But I, I, you know, as far as, you know, filming anything commercial out there is illegal. Yeah. Okay. So I got to tell you that. Um, however, I've taken a lot of film crews out there, <laughs> but they were always <laughs> under the okay of the Forest Service. Eventually go. I had to battle them, but I always got approval from them. It's just very difficult. Now, there are some loopholes there. And once I had... Uh, there was a film crew from uh, the Netherlands that uh, actually came out. And they had a dickens of a time. They couldn't get permission to go in there. And that's what I, they wanted me to take them on a horseback. And I went to the Forest Service. And then all of a sudden, somebody came up in the Forest Service. Well, if they're filming digitally, now this was years ago, a digital camera, that's okay. Well, all the cameras now, aren't they pretty much digital? So, I mean, there are, I don't know. I, I just know that there yeah. have been some film crews that I have filmed with on the Dutchman yeah. in recent history, and I've told them it's gonna be an uphill, uphill struggle, I'll help you all I can. And what they've managed to do is they take the easy way out. They don't go to the Forest Service, they'll film out here and make it do. Are there places up there in the mountains that match areas on the map that are not the right area? The profile map? Yeah. Well, but there's a lot of places that look like that. there's a lot. I could take you to Rogers Canyon and see a duplicate map. Matter we, of fact, we, I can I can take you out here in the in the gold fields and show you the map. Yeah. So the map fits a lot of places. It fits a lot of places. And we were out there. We we were out there at Rogers. And, the only and, thing you're talking about is the needle that that really might kind of. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, not, they say sombrero, 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 el sombrero. El sombrero. The and I can take you over to to Salt River and show you the map too. So there's a lot of places. There's a lot map. of places. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, like the three red hills. Yeah. The the most one of the the most as I was saying, there's only a couple people that I would hang my hat on in their story, and one I mentioned inside the shop, and that was John Cochera, and um, his story, I may I, I partially published it in one of my books, but um, someday I may write that story too, but his his story, and what he found. Uh, is the absolute proof that the Dutchman mine exists and where it does exist. And what is the only thing, what, what, I'll ask you a question, what is the only thing that would prove in your mind that this is Dutchman gold? Well, as I understand it, it has to match the area geologically. What I like to say, it has its own DNA. There you go, it, the, door, it, the ore. Yeah, it doesn't that identify correct. with any other. That's correct. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. And the ore that John Cochera and his brother, he, he was a customer of mine for 17 years. I used to pack him in the mountains. He was a Dutchman hunter. And um, he, he got to a place in his life where he couldn't come out anymore. And we had become pretty good friends. And he said, Ron, he said, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you a story. And he said, 1962, he and her brother hiked up on top of Peter's Mason, Malapai actually, and uh, in some saddlebags, and I detailed this story, uh, I found <clears throat> 24 pounds of very, very rich gold ore. And um, 
I've used a lot of it. He was a jeweler. He made jewelry. <laughs> you found it? John okay. Cochere and his brother, Joe. Okay. And uh, he said, I have no use for it anymore, and I know you're interested. Would you like to buy what I have left? And he had six pieces left, and I bought all of them. And uh, I gave one to the museum, which promptly, I think, has disappeared <laughs> years ago. But um, I won't get into any of that story. But the only piece that is in existence today that I know of is the big piece I have. And um, what happened was I had the grand idea. You see, Dutchman ore does exist. You're talking about the matchbox? or Yes, the okay. matchbox and gold ore. Okay. He has that too. I don't know if you know who that is. But at any rate, sufficient to say I've seen it many times. And I, I said, I wonder if there's a way to compare this. Well, the way to compare it would be to what Cochera found to what Dutch manure was that was left. And electron scanning microscope was the test. Well, at that time, I couldn't get anything done with like All the only electron, my, electron, electron scanning scopes were in colleges. If you weren't a professor, they didn't talk to you. So I, at that time, and I just re-met him again, Tom Glover, I don't know if you know Tom. Um, he's a, he was a Dutchman hunter, and he's written books on it. Tom's a good researcher, and at that time, I sold him a piece of, I, I had Cochera's R. Well, he was a professor, I believe in Oregon. He, and I discussed this with him, and he got the job done. And it's outlined in his book, and there are records that exist. So what, what he did, he did even better than what I suggested. He took, he went to the guy that owned Dutch Manor, and he, he said, okay, I'll, let it, I'll loan it for that because it's non-destructive, the test. He took Cochera's ore, he took all the Goldfield ores, the Black, the black Queen, the, the Mammoth, the Bulldog, and for good measure, he went and took... Uh, the vulture mine at Wickenburg because there's those bullshit stories that the Dutchman got it from there. So he took all those in for a test. And have you heard this story? No. And the results were, there really, as I mentioned before, only two really types of quartz that kind of have epithermal, mesothermal. That's where gold is deposited. And on the west side, there are hydrothermal quartz veins. There's no mesothermal, there's no epithermal. Now, the results were that all of the, well, I'll start with the vulture mine. It was so different visibly from everything else that he brought in, they didn't even run it. So it didn't even look like anything, uh, including Dutchman ore. All of the Goldfield ores were highly similar to each other and they were epithermal quartz. So everything out here is epithermal. <coughs> now, Dutchman ore and Cochera's ore were mesothermal. And there was a 75% chance, this is what it said, that they either came from the same source, same location, or a related source. What's that tell you? So, why did he find it on top of Malapai when I'm telling you it's way east of there? Well, there is an old Spanish trail that goes through there. It's actually monumented. I followed most of it. And it goes across Malapai, up and across Geronimo, and it comes down out at the Salt River. I've hiked that. I used to go in that way a lot. And um, I do believe that the Spanish, when they were prospecting out there and mining, they were packing it out. And still, the best way to get out of the mountains was to the river. And that would have been an avenue to go over the high mountaintops rather than through the canyons and the brush and the boulders, mm -hmm. go through the high mountaintops down into the river. Makes sense. And uh, I believe they lost this off of one of the pack, whatever. That's what Cochera found. So that in itself, and the documentation that happened, is proof to me, beyond a shadow of doubt, beyond everything else that exists that I know of, that Dutch manure really is from the superstitions. It's just amazing to me, though, that after all this time, that nobody has ever really been able to go back there, which we need to do, and document this. Well, I, I've documented some of it, and, and it's, Glover's got it in his book. Uh, yeah. uh, Jack Sanfelice has got it in his book. Jesse's got it in his book. It's been on TV. I've done TV things where I've actually talked about the East Side. 
matter of fact, the last one I did was for un, uh, America Unearthed. It was a history thing. And that I, we talked extensively about the East Side. So it's been out there. Um, but yeah, as far as documenting it, I'd love to delve more into the Cochera story and bring that out. <clears throat> and, and that is kind of the proof of the pudding. So how do we do that? Well, to honestly get that, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you that. The ore that is off the Silver Chief or quotes the Dutchman, mm -hmm. guess what it is? It's mesothermal. Which would match up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at the matchbox real close, if you have, have you ever seen it? No, well, just pictures. No, okay. Close. You know what else is there that's identifying? Chrysocola. You know what that is. It's like... Turquoise, it's related. It's okay. a copper, it's green like turquoise. Oh, okay. Chrysocola. Yeah, very prominent. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's on the matchbox. Mm -hmm. That is also on, on the Silver Chief ore, it's on Dutchman ore, and it's on Cochera. Okay, since uh, the time you're talking about, nobody's gone back up there, and you, you need to take us up there. Okay, now you're going to have to stick around to find out if Ron really does take us up to the mine. Just another one of the many mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.